Honestly, though, I, I, like, I didn't prepare that well because that's just the way I do it. I don't, like, I don't believe in preparing. I, don't, I personally don't really like preparers. Um, they're annoying people generally. Like, you know, what, what's like, hey, I, I really prepared for this. Well, you're a coward. You know, why don't... <laughs> where's your sense of adventure? How important is it that you, like, you know, why set yourself up for that? You, you know what I mean? Everyone's this careerist culture, you know, this sort of like trajectory thing. You know, it's going to kill you. You're going to end up lonely at the end and not doing what you want to do. Don't prepare, man. Just load up. I think that's the key. I think I'm rationalizing, though. Clearly, I'm rationalizing. Because you're like, that's my system. I mean, this is my system. It's right there on the floor. Why did I bring notebooks out here? What, am I going to look at notebooks? Is that why I brought them out here? It's ridiculous. I'm more professional. I've been doing this half my f***ing life. I'm going to bring notebooks out. It's to prove a point. It's to prove a point. I'll show you in a minute. I just, I... I don't prepare because, look, it's my system. How's that? In my mind, if I don't prepare and I pull this off, I'm a f***ing genius. I'm a genius. Right? And if I don't pull it off, I didn't prepare. If I would have set my mind to it, I would have nailed that but no, I, I didn't prepare because I like to roll the dice, man. Feel alive. What's going to happen? I don't know. I might fail. All right, f*** them. That would be you. I can blame myself for that. So, yeah, this, the reason I brought this out here is I, wanted, I know a lot of you are creative people. And I just wanted to share my system of success. I choose to write on hotel stationery. That's it. This is how I write. This is the process. Can you read that? I can't read that. That's also part of my process, is be sure to impulsively write quickly with a borrowed writing instrument uh, in a cursive that is unreadable. Because this is just phase one of the process. The second phase is decoding, understanding the text. Sure, write smaller and underline occasionally. That's good too. Or perhaps you can get to a point where, hey, let's get to the final part where you, you type it up Right, th that's right there, that's an almost finished joke. And over here, written in, is a punchline. I can't read it. See, make it challenging at all levels. <laughs> this is a system that's kept me out of the big time for 25 years, right here. <laughs> the reason I'm illustrating it to you is that my, my system sort of looks like this. When I write, I don't write jokes, I write thoughts. And that, I think the action of actually doing the writing is what's important to me. It's not whether or not it, I remember it or anything. So my writing process is I could be in a coffee shop, I could be standing on a bank line, if there are deposit slips, uh, maybe waiting at a cash register. So my process looks something like this. Oh, sh You got a pen? Do you have a pen? Just hand me that, can I, hand me that piece of paper. Yo, thank you, pen? Okay, uh, okay, I got it, thanks man. Saved a life today, you know, all right. <laughs> so then, I have the paper. So that, that's really done. That's the entire creative experience for me. It's like, the, it's done. Because a lot of them don't ever go anywhere. So that piece of paper goes onto a stack of pieces of paper that look a lot like it. <laughs> napkins and stuff. Now the problem is if I get too far away from those things, I don't know wh what I was thinking. So if I ever get to them, like I found a, a napkin not long ago, had three words on it. Autoerotic asphyxiation. <laughs> that, that was what was on the napkin. So that's sort of a problem, right? Because now I gotta sit there with that thing and go, what was going on that day? <laughs> like, I would have remembered if I did that. I mean, that, because that's a big day. That's kind of a game changer. I mean, you don't do that and go, oh, f yeah, I remember I did that. No, if you do that once, you do that. You've done that. <laughs> and then, like, I'm looking at it and I remember, oh, it's, I, it was in a hotel room. I, I decided at some point that autoerotic asphyxiation is strictly a hotel room activity. <laughs> that. Like, no one's doing that at home. You know, I picture men leaving on business trips saying, honey, where's that belt I always bring? You know, the, the one with the weird markings? I know I'm not that skinny. I don't know how that happened. All right. 